my name is Scott Silberry, and this is my wife Leah, and this is Marriage Matters, and uh, we're in our improvised studio, mm -hmm. yes. high above the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Yes. What I'm about today oh. is a man's needs. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! It says when a uh, when a <laughs> spouse is fulfilled and happy uh, in their marriage, it's usually because their needs are being met, and um, you know we hear that all the time. You know, I'm not happy in my marriage. You know, and um, you know, there, that's a whole other topic. We always talk about that. We need to make a note. That's the happiness in marriage is a, a whole other topic. That's like a selfish, um, a lot of times a selfish thing. But if you are meeting your spouse's needs, they're going to be happy in your marriage, and vice versa. Right. And and you know, and for guys, we do. We gravitate to places where we feel honor mm -hmm. and respect. And we've said it a million times. Men, the the, the language that we speak is the language of respect. Mm -hmm. And listen, I mean, it could be the worst work condition. Right. I and mean, we could be deep down in the coal mines of West Virginia. But if you feel like you're respected, you feel like your company and your boss appreciate you. Mm -hmm. You're so loyal, man. You're, you're going to get back up and you're going you're gonna to come back and, and give it another day. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in a relationship and, and you feel, you know, that you're respected. Listen, if... if, sh if we're having a conversation, even if it's in jest, and she wants to shut it down like that. If she says something disrespectful, um, my 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 emotion, my spirit feels mm -hmm. that 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 pierce, and it shuts me down, you know. And and, and so we do. Men want to feel honored and respected. Um, you know that means, ladies, women, wives, you don't blast them on Facebook. Mm, you know. It's a killer, you know. You don't blast them to the to your mother-in-law or to your or to your family mm -hmm. and friends <coughs> and mutual friends. Right. And look, I'm not talking about pump and sunshine, but I'm talking about respect and honoring your husband as mm -hmm. as God ordained them as a spiritual household. Now, the flip side is you say what? Well, he needs to respect. He needs to deserve that respect. Right. Listen, if you can't go into your marriage mm -hmm. uh, giving him the benefit of the doubt. Right. If only because God says honor and respect. Right, and that's the thing is there are no qualifiers in the Bible about. Uh, it says clearly, you know, wives respect your husbands, not if he deserves it. There's no if at the end of that sentence. Right, if he cuts the grass, if he does this and right. that, you know, if he treats me right, but you no, know, if he remembers our anniversary, if but, you know, right, th it's that's things right. like that, you know. And, and listen, and and from a man, you know, I'm just going to tell you. If, if they're in a home where they feel disrespected and they don't feel honored, mm -hmm. uh, I'm telling you, they're going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be the bar. It could be the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, it, could be, it could be at work. It could be the golf course. And it could be into the arms of another woman. Mm -hmm. if, if they feel, you know, that's, that's an intrinsic need. It's something that we seek, mm -hmm. right? It's, um, it's we, we need that relationship we need to feel respected mm -hmm. and honored and, and i'm just i'm telling you guys uh ladies that that if that's the household of strife and disrespect uh your husband is going to find something else somewhere else someone else mm -hmm. yeah, so he's going to check out all right four basic needs of men uh-oh there's four did y'all know there's that there's more than just sex they have four basic needs who knew Really? I know. <laughs> so, and, and look, I put a note up on here, and I said, this is where selfishness, selflessness mm -hmm. becomes so important. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, we talked the other day about covenant marriage versus contract marriage. A covenant is you both give 110% mm -hmm. to the other person. Contract marriage is 50-50. What am I going to get? And it's what Leah just said. You know, uh, I will respect him if he acts right. I will honor him if he brings home the check. Mm -hmm. Listen, that ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. That is not going to work. Okay? So this is where, you know, egos aside, um, you know, you've got to want what's best for, mm -hmm. for your husband. Mm -hmm. You've got to want your husband to succeed. And, and, and these are the four things that will help him, you, and your family succeed. Right. Well, you know, and if you're one of those women that are praying or have been hey, praying Nina. for changes in your husband... You know, if you want to see a drastic change in your husband, show him respect when he doesn't deserve it and see what happens. Yeah, no, that's that's a big one. You know. Well, you throw them off their game. Right. Right? So the first one is... Honor is need go. number one. 
right. And then uh, our Bible verse with this one is Ephesians five twenty two, and it's what I um, uh, one of the things I just said. But um, it says, "Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord." Um, Submit yourselves to your own husband as you do the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit, submit to their husbands in everything. And we talked about this briefly at the beginning, you know, about that word submission. A lot of times women hear this word and they just shut down. Like that's the end of the story. Yeah. They hear submit, and it's like you immediately think of like a woman on her knees in front of, you know, in front of her man with with food, a, a tray of food, and, you know, just serving him, like a servant, you right. know. And submission and servant aren't the same thing. Well, submission is not is not synonymous with weakness. Right. Listen, it takes a very strong person to submit to someone else, mm -hmm. voluntarily submit. Now, if it's servitude or it's indentured servitude or if it's if it's bondage and slavery or mm -hmm. dominance, that is that is not what we're talking about. That is not the biblical model of, of submission. Right. It is love. Listen, how, how do what is our relationship with Christ? Mm -hmm. You know, do do we say, well, you know, uh, I I can handle my own business. You know, sometimes we yeah, do. Yeah, you do, and then you fail. So when you when you submit to God, when you submit to the will of God, or, or when you submit to Christ, that is that oh. is that is a loving relationship. Hey, Brooke. To say that that you know, yeah, I can I can work through things. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to mess up 50-50, I guess, maybe more than that. Mm -hmm. But I love you, God, and I'm going to submit to you. Listen, it's the same thing with wives to their husbands, you know. And it is. It, it's a submission because it's love, because it's strength. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I always go back to, to Genesis. I love those first three chapters where, where you know, God created man. And then, then he looked around and didn't find a suitable mate. Uh, so he created woman. And, and it says, you know, he was created to be, Eve was created to be, his helper mm -hmm. and you think oh well you know that that's batman to robin you know no listen if you if, if azir is the is the original hebrew term uh for for woman uh for helper and it means uh strength rescuer capable of doing miraculous things mm -hmm. that is my wife you know is is that the wife you are to your husband mm -hmm. and, and so when we talk about submission uh, as the bible Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's the marriage model. Right. And listen, God created marriage. He He did not create it to fail. And and it's the way, you know, it's the way that he wants us to communicate with mm -hmm. him is the way he wants us to communicate with each other. Right. And it is. It's it's submission through love. Mm -hmm. Not through weakness, not through dominance, but, but through love. All right. Some examples of how to honor your husband. Yes. All right. Lay it on me. Allow him to fail or make mistakes. What? He is not looking. <laughs> you know, he is not looking. Like, you know, people, no one's perfect. And your husband is going to fail or make mistakes. It could be anything. He does not need someone correcting him all the time. That is not going to, to build him up. You know, he doesn't right. need a nag. He doesn't need someone correcting him all the time. You need to let him make those mistakes. He knows he made a mistake. And there's not a whole lot that I'm sure that, that needed to be changed. <laughs> but... Listen, nagging me is not going to make no. it better. I will trench. I will dig a trench. You will do the opposite. I will just to do die in that trench uh -huh. just to show. But when it's when it's done out of respect mm -hmm. and honor and prayer, let me tell you, I'm doing it, and I don't even realize it's being done because mm -hmm. it's being done out of love. Mm -hmm. So th that that's that's so critical, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, but, uh, all right. right. Number two is to conf what you just said: confront and love, but let God be the enforcer. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of times there's a difference between um, you need to give your, your spouse a safe place to confront. When you open yourself up to, to God's will, uh, God's enforcement comes through mm -hmm. uh, an awareness in your conscience, in your spirit. It doesn't take your spouse to, to nag or swing, you know, or swing sticks at you, right, you know? Right, right. And um, some of your, the other ways. Um, Honor your husband where you want him to be, not where he is. I love that one. I know. I, I know. I've got a million things to say about that yeah, one. But. I mean, that's incredible. It's like, if you want your husband to be a great man, honor him like he's a great man. Right. Um, cover his faults and focus on his strengths. Honor help uh, always encourages. And look, that's where that, that Azer comes in as, you know, as his wife, as his helper, um, where he has faults or deficiencies or weaknesses. Um you know, that's 
that's what I do. You know, that's my, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, I take that role very seriously. You know, what can I do to shore you up? Right. You know. It, um, it's not a competition. Mm-mm. It's not a competition. And, mm-hmm. and But, you know, we said, you've got to put self aside. You know, and this is where the covenant, where you're giving 110% to each right. other, works. Right. And the, but but you keep yourself in that in that continuity within the balance. Right. And and I want to focus on the second part of that, because it says cover his faults, but focus on his strengths. Yeah. And, um, you know, you might be in that position in your marriage where you're like, he's got no strengths. You know, he does have strengths. I promise you. Find right. them. Look Fine. for them. Well, what uh, attracted you to him in the beginning? Right. But he has strengths and honor them. And, you know, something that we'd like to, we've done and we recommend, if you've never done the um, oh, yeah, strengths, yeah. strengths, if you don't know what your uh, spouse's strengths are, find out. There's um, strengthfinders.com you can go to. Yeah. And, look, there's a whole assessment. This is what corporations use to know if they want to hire people yeah. or, or how to put them in the best positions. But there's also a, a book called Strengths-Based Marriage um, that, you know, it, it uses your strengths and shows how you as um as a married couple, how you complement each other with your strengths. And look, when I first looked at, at both of our strengths, um, I was like, oh, it's looked like, it looks like we're doing a, a business marriage merger, you know? I mean, because we have a lot of very um, dominant strengths, and we each do, um, you know, as far as, like, leadership and, and things like that. But when I saw his... And not only saw what his top strengths were, but when I saw what his bottom strengths were, um, oh, yeah, you know, I was really able to understand, like, you know, well, that's not a, a, a strength, or it's not a weakness for me. It right. is a strength for me. Like, um, you know, like empathy, you know, that's at the bottom of your of your list, you know, right. and a lot of people are like that, but it's not at the bottom of my list. So when we have a conversation, you know, and I'm like, you know, he just doesn't have it. You know, right. it's not like... He can get better at it. He's not. You're supposed right. to focus on the strengths that you're good at. Well, and that your marriage, right? Mm-hmm. Your, your combinations of, uh, with your Azer, is that those those strengths and weaknesses are, are very well blended yeah, and complimentary mixed. Complimentary of each Complimentary. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking for. love languages. We love that one, yeah, too. Yeah, glad you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and listen, there's even a kid's version. Mm-hmm. And we've had our teenage daughters uh, read that. Mm-hmm. And, we had um, all the kids take the love languages test. Because... <laughs> You know, I mean, it's good to know how it's best to love them, too. Yeah, you know? yeah. All right. No. Need number two. Oh, man, we're only on number two. Man, we got to ramp it up. But I, but I think we're going to spend some time on this one. Need number two is sex. sex. Now, this is what I found interesting. Mm-hmm. And if we're being honest, this is true. Mm-hmm. You know, men give affection to get sex. Mm-hmm. And women give sex to get affection. That's very true. And I didn't when I when I was studying and when we first went through the course and and even right now I'm thinking, wow, you know, is that really the case? But but you know, I, I think it is the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, not all the time, but you know, as a general rule, uh, everybody's motivated by something. Right. And and you know, and that's that's the switch. That's the trend. Right. And look, you know, uh, and I know this is a lot. You know, sex is either great in a marriage or it's not great in a marriage. There's really no in-between with sex. No, you're right. Um, Where's ours? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> you said either great or not great, and I said you said it's good. I didn't want to brag to the people. <laughs> We're hey, great. Tony, how's it going? <laughs> you caught us at a very We're difficult great. moment. <laughs> And um, um, now you this will be our last off. show ever. <laughs> you threw me off my game. <laughs> hey, um, Tony. <laughs> oh, my oh, my gosh. It's great. All We're, right. good. We're in a good place. Um, now, now, okay, now I remember. Don't throw me off like that. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, like, the majority of the time, men are much more sexual than women. And okay. I think it's about 30% of the time women in a marriage will be more sexual than their husbands. But... Knowing that going in, just go with with the odds, you know, that your husband is going to be more sexual than you are. And look, those are needs that have to be met. Um, they do, you know, whether you feel like it or, or not, or whether, you no. know, you need to, you need, this is where selflessness and selfishness no. come in. No, weapon, sex, sex is often weaponized. Yeah. And, and you know, and we want to read off of 1 Corinthians uh, 7, 4. Mm-hmm. And it's the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. And in the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, Mm -hmm. but yields it to his wife. 
And, and you know, and that, and she quotes it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, when she's getting all grabby and, and frisky, and I'm like, oh, we're sitting in church. And she's <laughs> like, don't withhold. But listen, that is the truth. And, and you know, then you know, it gets into a whole. I mean, like sex therapy is a whole industry in and of itself mm -hmm. because sex is uh, so important. It's so vital. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Adam and Eve. You know, they became one. You know, there's a spiritual meshing, there's an emotional, there's a mental, and there's a physical mm -hmm. uh, meshing of becoming one. And in and, and that verse, there's, you know, it's not meant for abuse, you know. Oh, no. You know, right. as far as, um, you know, when you say the wife does not have authority over her own body, you know, that it's not taking choice out of the, the matter, but, right, you right. know, no, it's, it's and, but it's point. for your husband to honor you as well. You know, but right. don't withhold. Don't withhold and don't um, use it as a weapon. Right. Well, he didn't take the trash out today. You know, I'm going to bed and wearing my 50 layers of sweats or whatever, yeah. you know. But, um, and, and then to help <clears throat> how to meet your husband's need for sex. Because, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I can, listen, I can, I, I mean, we talk to a lot of people and we, and we, and we message a lot of people. And, 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 you know, when you start talking about sex, the dynamic starts to change, mm. you know, and then a lot of a lot of um, a lot of pain comes up, and a, and a lot of mistrust comes up, and and um, <clears throat> you know, and, and sex is really uh, it, it's it it can be like you said a blessing, or or it can be a weapon and, and turn mm -hmm. into a curse. But things get different when we start talking about sex, and and you know, uh, you know, we've committed like with our kids, you know, age appropriate. You know, we, we, we talk openly mm -hmm. with them, age appropriate, right. because we don't want them to go into a, uh, a, a relationship mm -hmm. and being all cuckoo crazy about sex or, right. or afraid to talk about it or ashamed to talk about it. Right. But, but some of these ways is, you know, it says communicate with your husband that you accept his sexual needs and that you're committed to meeting them. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, does it involve chandeliers and... You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I mean, <laughs> but that's where you got to communicate. Right. I mean, if you go into a marriage, and and, and you're you're totally on different planes, Mar saying I do is not going to bring you cohesiveness in the marriage bed. Right. Communication will. Right. Yeah. You know. God created sex. Mm -hmm. God wants you to have sex. God wants you to enjoy sex. But <laughs> what's the qualifier? But with your spouse. Right, with your spouse. I was, that's Sorry, when you usually jump in, in, and you didn't. You know, God created sex. He, mm -hmm. That's why, we, where we started, he made our bodies different. Right. Right? They're, they're you know, when you're young and you look at the other, it's like, ah, that's, where does that go? And, right. You know. Well, you know, I also want to say that, that, you know, not only has our social culture distorted sex, but there's also churches that are distorted sex. You know, that, um, like, I grew up in a house where sex was a, a bad word, you know? I mean, it was never said at full volume. It was always whispered, you know? And, like, your your body was to be ashamed of, you know? And um, so, I, and I think church oftentimes, I mean, that's, like, a subject that many churches will not even tackle. Yeah. Because it's, like, there's no place for search, sex in the church. Right. Well, not in the church, but... <laughs> Okay, you. I'm gonna let you refocus. <laughs> there, they, there's no, they're not comfortable talking about sex. But you're absolutely right. God created sex, but we treat it like the devil created. Sex. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you for saying that. Now you got me back on track. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. And and fine, Charmaine's comment. But because you know that, and that's where you know <laughs> that that God created this. Because listen, Satan, before you're married, Satan spends all his time trying to get you in bed. Mm -hmm. Before you're married, right? Once you're committed in a, in a, in a, in a God covenant marriage, what does Satan do? He spends everything he can to, to keep, keep you out, out of bed. Yep. That's how important sex is right. to a marriage. Right. No, I mean it absolutely is. Sex is the you know, we talked about the covenant of marriage, but um, you know, and we talked about like sacrifice like blood sacrifices used to be like the, the seal of a, a covenant with God, but sex is the covenant seal in marriage. You need to have sex in your marriage. And you need to have it often. It can't yeah. you know Listen, and talking about communication and compromise is the second way. Mm. It says men are visually and physically stimulated. Men want to see their wives' bodies, while most women are uncomfortable with their bodies. And, you know, when we talk about women's language, it's the mm. language of security. And a lot of times that there's some insecurity involved. Now, you know, we as men, it's, it's our duty 
to honor our wives and to make them understand that 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 they're desirable it's that foundational law of marriage Mm -hmm. is one of the elements of pursuit uh you know if your wife doesn't feel like like you want her you desire her uh that she is just you know so in your heart and you're you're 110 Mm percent pursuing her uh emotionally physically spiritually she's not going to feel it she's not going to turn into some notion right um so so that's where compromise you know you right. could be romantic and it could be chandelier. And I will say to the women, you know, don't don't hide your body from your husband. You know, don't, um, you know, give it to him. Yours is the only body he gets to see. You know, I mean, share right, right. with him. And, and if you try to weaponize it mm-hmm. and you disrespect him and then you withhold it from him, guys are going to go looking, for, they're right. going to go somewhere else. Like to him, you look great. Because that's it. That's all he gets to see. Right. You know. Well, and pornography does have a huge part with that. You're exactly right. Mm-hmm. And, and so you know, uh, we were talking about that the other the other night, where you know, where where men and I don't want to get off track on pornography, but mm-hmm. but it is when we're talking about sex, uh, because it does it, it it destroys and distorts it. Right. But you know, when when women watch see pornography, they. Well, maybe not in the addictive part, but when they see it, it may be a curiosity. I don't think it's a good idea. We don't think it's a good idea to spice things up in your marriage no. with pornography. Let's just say it. No. no okay? Don't do it. Because when women do that, and you told me the other night, mm-hmm. is when, when you see it or when you've seen it, you're comparing yourself to the women on screen. Mm-hmm. And that's not even reality. Right. And so you're like, well, I'm not... Well, you know, I don't look like that. But listen, when guys watch pornography, listen, I don't care if you're like a 13-year-old and you haven't even hit puberty. You see yourself as that mm-hmm. actor. And you're not. Right. So that's not even reality. Right. So Women listen, see the body and like that's what I have to be. You right. know, for a man to and, be. And guys see the men and they think that's what I am. Right. Listen, so let's just be clear. This is another bell ringer situation. Mm-hmm. Never, ever, ever. Is it ever a good idea to introduce pornography into your marriage to spice mm-hmm. things up? Number three, <laughs> uh, be more sexual than you feel and be creative. Um, men have the need for sex and women have the gift of sex. Mm. And I love that sentence. Uh, your spouse's needs won't always match your desires. Rarely oh, that's good. Where, will wow. your spouse's, I mean, rarely are both of you going to be like, yeah, we're so in the mood to have sex tonight, you know? Um, you know, it could be a man had a long day at work or whatever, and uh, you know, or a woman had a long day with the kids, and and one of you wants to crash, and the other one's you know turned on and wants to have sex. Right. Rarely are your sexual needs going to line up. But I love that sentence. But you're exactly right. Men have the need for sex, and women have the gift of sex. No, it's very cool. Mm-hmm. And and again, it goes back. Listen, this is all done by design, right? Mm-hmm. God created this, and so it's like we talk about it. And then it's like, that's amazing. Right. It's amazing how it works, how it complements. Um, but, but you know, it's all done by design. Mm-hmm. You know? So as amazing as, as, as sex can be, um, it takes effort. It takes communication. And listen, all the stuff about, look, I do. I, I agree. You know, spontaneity. Mm-hmm. When, when the moment hits, it's super cool. But, you know, that usually implies... One person's feeling spontaneous, right? The other person's like, "Let's okay, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go along with right. this," you know. Um, <laughs> but but you know, then, then the third need, and I'm gonna read that one right off the bat. Uh-huh. But it's a man needs fun and friendship, and and it's like, oh well, that sounds kind of you know, really. I mean, what about your you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs? No, listen, we're talking about men. We're talking about us, mm-hmm. and we do. We need fun and friendship. Mm-hmm. And what it, the first one, it says, your husband, your husband will be open with you to the extent that you're having fun together. And I think that goes for anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's miserable, if it's just, if it's darkness, no, nobody wants to be in constant strife. Right. And I think just like the difference between men and women. Look, women, they don't need a reason or a time or a place to just open up and communicate ever, you know. We could be sitting wherever or have had a fight. If you want to come communicate, I'm cool. I'm, I love to communicate. You know, women love to communicate. But men, they don't, you know. Right. And that's the best place to get them to communicate is, is when you're being friends, when you're having fun with each other. Right. Because we do. We, 
we come with a natural guard. Mm -hmm. We come with a natural defense system. And the best way to, for that to drop is mm -hmm. when it becomes, when you're engaged in a fun or friendly activity. Mm -hmm. You know, same way with meeting other people. You know, uh, you know, it's always very guarded. But if, if immediately you're engaged in something that you that you both enjoy, man, yeah, that's where friendships, you know, relationships mm -hmm. blossom. I mean, think about when you were, you know, when you were dating. Uh, you know, w during this pursuit period. I mean, there was something that you connected on that was fun, or at least that was friendly. You know, people, oh, I married my best friend. You know, mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot to that. I mean, either you were friends or you become friends. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be a friendship element in that. And like, you know, like I see women will post you know about being hunting widows and and you know things like that you know look if you want to for your husband to be more engaged in your marriage um, or you want to spend more time with your husband meet him where he's at you know go sit in the hunting stand right. or whatever with him the deer stand no, you're right and, you know go to the golf course with him you know go <laughs> and then that'll solve his yeah. desire to play never golf. golf again <laughs> <laughs> you know, but put on the put on the perfume. Go sit in the deer stand. <laughs> That's right. But go meet him. Where is that? You right. know. <laughs> but you see, women say that all. Oh. Well, my husband's always somewhere. Yeah. You know. And listen, and and she 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 jumped on on one of the points because it's just a it is a natural progression and it's true. Mm -hmm. And it, it is how to establish friendships. And listen, you know, it is it's so important to be, you know, my friend and my wife, but I don't need her to be my mother. You know, and God blessed me with one mother, and, and she's passed, and I'm not looking for a replacement. Now, I want her to be the mother to our children, mm -hmm. but I need, in my Azair, in my helper, in my mate, in my wife, I need you to be my friend and my wife. Mm -hmm. and, and those are powerful, powerful relationships mm -hmm. to have in a man's position. Right. Um, you know, the, the, the Peter Pan syndrome, you know, uh, where, where, you know, we're... The husbands never grow up. Well, Peter Pan's always find a Wendy, mm -hmm. an enabler. It doesn't always have to be because you enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that your spouse enjoys it. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what we said in the beginning. It's about it's about being selfless, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, because as children, that's what we do. Right. I don't want to go. I don't want to. Hey, I understand because you're five. But now you're, you're an adult, mm -hmm. you know? And, and do things. Hey, you know what? Suck it up. Right. Look, Scott doesn't like to go to movies, but I love to go. Oh, you're right. You know? Well, uh, then how did we compromise? I, we go to the movie grill yeah. so he can eat. Well, that's a perfect example. <laughs> you know? I mean, no, you're right. You know, things like that. Look, you know, after we got married, we went on that four-day uh, trek bike ride. You know? That is not my favorite thing in the world to do. Right. But he loves it. Yeah. You know, I love road cycling. I used to do hundred mile bicycle races through the mountains and, and multi state and, and and you know what? Leah doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't. Like but you know what we did? She scheduled, she booked a four day bike ride. But how do we compromise? It went through Sonoma Valley, beautiful section of California, mm -hmm. wineries and, and it was great food. So we were able to, to mesh mm -hmm. it out. But you know what? She did, and think about it on your honeymoon. You're sitting on a on a little piece of carbon fiber with a leather strip across, you know, for for 50, 60 miles a day through the mountains right. and hills. That doesn't that doesn't really lend itself to a lot of romance. Not good for rule number two. Not. <laughs> yeah. But but you know what? Because she knew that's where my heart was. Right. She did it. You know so. No, I appreciate it. And number What's four, number four? Knock it out. Support at home is number four. Mm. Support at home. Um, it says men need to do their equal share of chores in the home, especially if both spouses work. A husband should give his best at his job and at home. Yeah, listen, I, I'm going to tell you guys. Listen, we, you know, if we're not open about the fact that we were married and divorced uh, from other people, then we would not... <laughs> We would not be doing you. We would be doing you a disservice. Right. This is where God put this on our heart. Uh, primarily remarriage and blended families. Mm -hmm. But these principles apply uh, to, to marriage, mm -hmm. right? And, and listen, when when I was married before, it was over 20 years ago. I would work, I would work, and I would work. I was working undercover for 12 years, and I would come home, crazy hours, day and night, and 
listen, when I got home, it was time for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't come home with the, with the, well, I'm home, I have a wife, I have a child. Uh, you know, now my, my better job begins. My, the way I looked at it was I just did my time. Right. Now, I'm going to hang out here at this address until I get to get up and leave and go back to my work. Mm-hmm. And you know how successful that was? Right. It wasn't successful at all. And, and it, you know, I always say that, you know, I had a mistress and her name was work. And, and that's where my commitment, my dedication, my focus. Um, sometimes I couldn't wait to get out of the, the, the address where I received mail to go to the location where I received pleasure. A lot of guys live with that same mentality Mm -hmm. that their work is where life begins. Their work is fulfilling. And it goes back to what we talked about earlier about respect. Mm -hmm. You know, at work where you earn respect (coughs) and and, and honor, you can't wait to leave that house. Because it it is a physical location where you get mail. And you sleep until you get to go back to where you bring joy. Right. And that is not the way God designed this. Right. Right. All right, how to support your husband at home. Uh, oh, I like this one. The first is women have the gift of nesting. A man needs his wife to create and maintain an atmosphere in their home that causes him to want to be there. And this can be misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we are talking, we're talking about Bible-based principles. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about um, feminism or liberalism or right. any of this stuff. This is this is by design, mm-hmm. okay? And and men and women were giving. They were they were given. They were blessed, right? Okay, and and one of the blessings, one of the gifts that women have, is the gift of nesting. Now it doesn't mean it's not all know, the time. Some women don't, right? But it doesn't mean that you you're the domestic goddess, right? You've got to be June Cleaver with your pearls and your this and your that. But but you know it's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, what did I tell you? I had an apartment for about eight years. And the walls were white, and I never put a, a picture, a painting, uh, never painted. I never put like a, a Farrah Fawcett poster on there. I used to have one of, one of Charlie's Angels. I mean, and it had like this kind of whitish carpet. I mean, it looked like an asylum, right? Mm-hmm. An asylum. Because I didn't, I don't have that nesting. Mm-hmm. To me, it was a place to lay my head. We bought, we bought our homes a couple years ago. All the walls were white, the carpet was white, I was completely fine with that, but you brought the warmth, mm. the design, the decor, the furniture, and you made it a home. Not because a woman's place is at the home, it's because you had the gift of nesting, mm-hmm. and you made it comfortable for me and the kids, and for yourself. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. Um, women need to be domestically centered and diligent, including mills, housekeeping, and homemaking. Look, we have strengths, okay? Okay. God made us different, and he gave us different strengths. Um, but naturally, women are inclined for these things, you know. We're inclined to be that, that domestic partner. Um, and look, I know women today work. I work. I work sometimes 100 hours a week. And that's right. where that, that Azer mentality that, um, you know, that, that you help each other, that you're, um, you know, you fill in the gaps. You know, when, when your spouse cannot do it. but yeah, um, that's true. If there's an atmosphere of peace in the home, the husband will want to come into that environment, mm-hmm. into that atmosphere. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, listen, why do guys get off of work and they go hang out at the bar? Right. You know, because there's nobody haggling them. Because they, they, they have a sense of peace. Right. And, and, and it's true. May, I mean, the home has got to be a place where you desire to get to. Right. You know, there are certain needs. <clears throat> there's four needs. That, that a man needs in a marriage mm-hmm. and, and this is all this again this is Bible based right. as far as the needs that a man mm-hmm. requires right it is it is honor it is sex it is fun and friendship and it's supported home and these are the the needs of a man that we're talking about today we're going to talk about the needs of a woman on Monday what you know so just if you get your own show if, if you're just tuning in <sighs> It's, so today's show is just about the men's needs. Oh, my God. So we got a challenge for the women this week. Um, it says, ladies, take the lead with prayer this week. Hold hands with your husband and pray a prayer similar to this. Uh, God, I recognize and accept my responsibility to meet my husband's needs for honor, sex, fun, and friendship, and support at home. Help me follow through on the areas where I can improve. I want to praise and honor him in public and in private. 
Well, yeah, that's a big one. We didn't even touch on that about honoring your husband in public. Yeah. You know? Well, I did. I, I said stay off of Facebook. Well. I mean, that's that's one of the Don't criticize in public. Don't criticize. Sure. You're but, right. All right. We're wrapping up. So Monday will be all about uh, a women's needs. Right? Are you excited for that one? I'm very excited. All right. <laughs> we'll have like 8 million women tune yeah. in, you know, which is fabulous. Bring your husbands. But that's, you know what? Thank you. Let's yeah. get you guys involved in this, you That's know? Right. We thank you. We pray for you. Mm -hmm. And God bless you. Bye.